dear friends and welcome to Liz at Home. Today I'm doing a color and chat in this mandala book of mine. It's a sweet little mandala book that I'm making an effort to actually finish. I've got a bunch of gel pens and I've got um, watercolor paint that I felt like trying and I thought I would just color and chat in this today. If it seems as if the video is getting too long, then I'm going to fast forward it a little bit at the end or do a double speed or something like that. Today I wanted to chat about why it's important for us to also enjoy the little things in life and to look upon how we can find little things and to maybe take a kind of a five-day challenge in trying to find the little things that we can enjoy. But before I start talking about all of that, this first color is a Jelly Roll pink gel pen that I'm trying to finish. So I don't actually manage to finish it even at the end of this mandala. It's so near the end that every time I use it, I'm too scared to choose a large area with it in case it runs out in the middle. It runs very nicely. I'm still pleased, but you can see there what a very small little amount of ink is left. But it's remarkable just how much ink gets used. Um, not how much, how little ink gets used when you're coloring with it. And before I go any further also, I wanted to ask you to please comment if you would like to at the bottom of the video in the more information and to like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content. I hope you enjoy these color and chat videos. I'm not entirely sure that I'm going to get around to doing a what I colored this month video. I've been umming and aahing whether I should or whether I shouldn't, please let me know below if you'd like me to because I haven't actually coloured that much. I've been taking a little bit of a dip from social media. I went through quite a feeling of being very down at the beginning of this month and had a bit of a struggle. Um, so, yeah. Luckily, I'm feeling a bit more on top of things now and have managed to get myself out of my deep decline. I was very distressed to hear through an email that one of my very faithful, kind subscribers, Peggy, is not well at the moment. And if you do pray and if you are a believer, I would appreciate prayers for her. She's suffering with some health issues. So... Now to think about what are little things and how to find little things to enjoy. I was thinking about this as I was struggling and feeling depressed. So um, I thought I'd start by saying, do you struggle to appreciate and enjoy life? Sometimes it can help to get back to the basics. So enjoying the little things in life is one of the best ways for us to increase our happiness and to live with gratitude. The question is how do we learn to identify and enjoy the little things that life has to offer? So, finding the little things is sometimes quite difficult, especially if you tend to be a glass half full kind of person. We all have our inner critic and if that little inner critic is left to its own devices, it will take the joy out of everything. I must say this is one of the things that I struggle with. So the key, I think, or one of the keys is to brainstorm. So the first challenge we can do is to brainstorm and how are we going to effectively do this to identify the small things in life? 
So to do that, we're going to need a pen, a paper or a journal and a quiet space to think. I sometimes use my art journal to journal in and other times I use a gratitude journal or something like that. So one of the ways to do this is to sit in a quiet, comfortable space where you won't be disturbed. Think about something you enjoy in life. It could be colouring, it could be watercolours, it could be nature, listening to the birds around you, feeling the sun on your skin. Maybe you get enjoyment out of knitting. Maybe you like diamond painting. Maybe it's music. So write down each thing that pops into your head. Don't think, oh no, that's stupid. Just write it down. Notice how each thing makes you feel when you write it down. And as you focus on that positive feeling, you'll begin to start to feel happier and more content. These are the only steps you need to take on day one. So what are they again? Just to reiterate, you can sit down in a quiet place with a pen, pencil and paper or journal and you can write down some of the things that you enjoy doing. So even just sitting down for 10 minutes and identifying the things that you're grateful for and that you enjoy can make a big difference. You can write down even things that like, for me being with my grandchildren, having them in the home really lifts my spirit. It isn't always easy to focus on the little things in life. So by doing a challenge like this, it helps you to learn how to identify positive things. Now we're going to reach day two and what we need to do then is to have our same journal and pen and look at the things we were grateful for or that we that made us feel better. Read them through again. Sit quietly for a moment or two and then say them out loud. So say something like, I'm grateful for my grandchildren. I'm grateful and feel happy when the sun shines. I'm grateful for my husband. I'm grateful for and feel happy to be in a home of my own. Anything like that, those are all things that I'm truly grateful for. You can say, I'm grateful for coloring. I'm grateful for my faith. I, anything that comes into your mind. And as you're saying the things aloud that you wrote in day one, you might start to think of more things that you're grateful for or that make you feel happy. And it's a good idea to write those down and to add them to your list. And the key to building up gratitude is to practice it every day. I'm busy making a gratitude journal and I'll let you know when it's done and when it's available on Amazon. And I'm trying to put little keywords and things to start your feeling of gratitude at the top of each page. I will probably make it available on Etsy as well if you're one of those people that prefers to buy something in colour and download and print them yourself. So now we're going to get on to day three. Day three is a little bit different. Being the fact that it's the little things that mean the most, it's often especially true when it comes to our connections with people around us. And what is really interesting is that connections in the way of even something like YouTube, for me, if somebody comments on one of my videos, that's something I'm immensely grateful for, something I put in my gratitude journal, and it makes me not feel alone. So I think connecting in communities, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Facebook, if you live on your own is very important. I also get emails from subscribers and there are a few people that write to me fairly regularly and they mean the world to me so I'm very grateful for them but now in your real life your relationship with the people you care about are often taken for granted 
when takes your children for granted, you take your husband, your mom, your dad, your cousins. Technology, much as it can mean a lot, has meant that many of us now spend less time with our families than ever before. And I think this is especially true after COVID and all of the lockdowns. It became easy in a way for us not to go out, not to pop in to visit somebody. So um, it's important for us to build up our connections with others again. And being with people really can help you feel better. Why do connections matter? Us humans are really social creatures. Even introverts require some level of human interaction to maintain good mental health. The connections we make have a direct impact on the way we feel. They can also impact our physical health. The people you surround yourself with will have a huge influence over how you feel. I find that when my singing pupils arrive for their lessons, I always feel uplifted after teaching and I think it's because of the human interaction. So if you want to enjoy the little things in life, focusing on building up and strengthening your connections is a really important step. Maintaining good relationships is key to self-care and ultimately for enjoying life. So, what we're going to need to do this is a minimum of 10 minutes, a phone or the internet. And I feel a little bit like an episode saying for the next installment, wait, but I wanted to just speak about what I'm using in this picture now. And these are some handmade watercolor paints by Lighthouse. They're called Lighthouse. I'll find the link. I bought them on Etsy in 2019 or something. And I'm not entirely sure if the company is still going or not. But what I'm doing is mixing up quite a rich mixture because I want this to be quite opaque. So this is not really how one would normally use watercolor paints, but I'm making a very creamy consistency and I'm just going to paint a beautiful, rich, dark red because I felt like it <laughs> and it made me happy. So now we're going back to our small things and building connections. And what are the action steps we can use? We're going to use our gratitude journal again, and we're going to write down these action steps so that we can remind ourselves. So what you can do is you can think of somebody you haven't spoken to for a while and you can actually phone them, not leave a WhatsApp message, not leave a quick direct message on Instagram, but actually phone them. It was so amazing for me, these two calls I did with the other colorists where I did the interviews perked me up enormously. It was so great to actually see somebody and talk to them. So pick up someone you care about, whether it's your friend, your mom, your dad, your cousin, your uncle, your aunt, your granny, your grandchild. Pick up a phone, call them, ask if it's convenient to chat, and then have a little chat with somebody you care about. Absolutely fabulous. Another thing we can do is organize a meetup with a friend. That's sometimes a bit more difficult. You may need transport. It may be difficult, but just to go and grab a coffee somewhere, or if you're still worried about infections and COVID or something, maybe suggest meeting up in a garden somewhere and walking around the garden. If there's a national garden or lovely grounds or somewhere that you could meet. Spending time together with somebody is awesome. Find some common ground with somebody if you're struggling to get to know them. Look for something that you may have in common for some similarities and find something to talk about like that. A good way if you struggle with conversation when you're meeting somebody is to pay them a compliment. Say, your hair looks lovely or makes me feel so great just to see you. That's a compliment to them. 
you can say something like i love i love the way your nails look if they've got nice nail varnish or something on i like your dress what a lovely handbag what a gorgeous color of lip gloss whatever you come across um find something positive to let them know or even if it's something they've done well or say say it's say it's coloring related you could leave a little comment under somebody's picture on instagram um, but if you're seeing somebody for real you could say something if they do a craft that you really like so it's sometimes difficult to find time to, but to take 10 minutes for a chat is not impossible so think about that and try that for day three now don't you think that that red is looking quite delicious it was really so lovely to paint it it really was and i mean this is not a particularly thick paged book or anything but i was using such a thick creamy mixture of paint that it didn't make made the pages a little bit a little bit curvy but it was actually fine to work with so now we're going to go on to day four which is sometimes easier and oftentimes much more difficult and that is to appreciate yourself so we're going to write i would suggest in your journal that you write this down day one day two day three day four is appreciate yourself It's sometimes hard to put you yourself first and we're often our own worst critic. So, especially if you're a mum and you have young children, it's very difficult to leave time for yourself. So if you answer, is it difficult to leave time for yourself and to give yourself time to do things you enjoy, then it's kind of important to think about that. Why is it important to appreciate yourself? We've got a lot to deal with. Every person has a lot to deal with in our daily lives. Um, and it, the trouble is, it's when we don't appreciate and love ourselves that we're going to find it harder to be grateful and to enjoy life. Without taking care of yourself, you'll end up feeling constantly stressed, anxious, and potentially depressed. How can you possibly expect to appreciate the world around you when you're struggling to simply get by? If you want to start enjoying the little things, you're going to need to start showing yourself some love. So how can you do that? The things we need for today is not money, but your calendar or your diary, and again, our pen and paper. And we're going to have some action steps. Step number one is schedule a date with yourself. Take out your calendar and look to see when you can slot in some alone time. If you look at your calendar and you don't think you have any alone time, Pretend it's a vitally important meeting that could earn you a load of money or something and force it into your schedule. Looking after yourself is crucial, so you really do need to schedule it. On the first day of your alone time, write down in your journal a list of the things that you can do to appreciate yourself more. Which areas of your life need the most attention? And once you've got a list of the things you can do, you can pick one each day to focus on. It doesn't have to be a long time, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Take a walk in nature. Lots of studies have shown that being surrounded by nature can do absolute wonders for your well-being. Even just a short walk around the block can help to clear the mind and recharge your batteries. There's so many ways you can start appreciating yourself more when you start to show yourself some love, you develop a more positive outlook. And this in turn helps you to identify and appreciate the little things around you. 
even something like taking that alone time to wash your hair, to take yourself off and have a haircut, a blow dry, um, a facial, take the time to give yourself a pedicure, <laughs> whatever works for you. It doesn't have to be a pampering thing. It could be that that time you're going to read scripture or some philosophy or some poetry or something that helps your inner self to blossom more. Okay, now before we get to the final day of our five-day challenge in trying to appreciate ourselves, I'm going to take some more time to talk about this colouring piece and I'm going to speed up the rest of the video because it is going to be too long otherwise. Um, I'm really liking the way that the red is looking with the pink. I hope you like it as well. And I hope you'll forgive me for speeding up the video. I try to make my videos not longer than 20 to 30 minutes. I've, I personally find it difficult to watch anything longer than that. So that's why I choose that type of time value. You will see that or you, if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook or anything, you will have noticed that I have been taking a little bit of a social media break myself. And this has been because of having been down and trying to find ways to get past it myself again. And that's where all of my five day challenge idea comes from. And it's things that I've been doing myself and that I thought I would then share with you. So I'm not an expert on this at all. I'm just speaking about things that I've been doing. And I hope that they could help you if you're somebody that also struggles with depression, always having a bit of a difficult time every now and then. So I've hardly been on Instagram. I haven't been posting much of my stuff and I've been struggling a little bit with making videos. And um, I thought I would just share this with you in case you're somebody that also struggles like that and um, ask your forgiveness. And I'm, I'm going to carry on with the sped up video and talk about day five in our challenge. So now we're on sped up viewing and day five of the challenge. And for day four, we chatted about how to start appreciating ourselves more and how it helps to boost gratitude. So on day five, the last day in the challenge, we're going to focus on the importance of slowing down. It's so easy for us to get swept up in the hectic pace of our lives. And with so much to organize and get done each day, it's really difficult to truly stop and appreciate the world around us. So while you may think you need to keep moving to be successful, the opposite can sometimes be true. By slowing down, we get the chance to make more rational decisions and it puts us in greater control. When we live a fast paced life, it can also add a lot of stress onto our days. When you're constantly stressed and tired, you're not going to be able to enjoy or appreciate the little things because they just fly by. So in this final challenge of the five, we're going to use our pen and paper again and our quiet space. We're going to look at our what a to-do list on a today would look like and ask yourself on that list so you can make a list of everything you planned to do that day. Perhaps you already have a bullet journal or something with everything you wanted to do and you can look at that and you can ask yourself whether it's realistic. Are there things on there that you could delegate to somebody else? Or maybe you could eliminate some of the things from the list that don't actually need to be done on that day. Um, and that can help you a little bit. The more you have to do, the harder it is to be to slow down. 
So practice mindfulness as well. I've spoken about mindfulness before and us colorists know that a lot of time doing coloring is mindful, focusing on the pencil, focusing on the color, focusing on the moment really helps you. Even five minutes of mindfulness can really help. And that can help you to slow down. It can help you to be more aware of what you're doing at each moment. Do what I did. Switch off your phone. Have a little bit of a social media vacation. Decide that you don't have to post. You don't have to follow each hashtag. I start to feel personally because I like people. I like the people that I follow their YouTube channels, I like their, their, I then need to follow them on Instagram because they're offering a hashtag. I have to do it because they're offering this and they're offering that. I should do it to show that I appreciate them. And yes, if you're looking for something and you want to do it, that's great. But none of it has to be done. It's all a personal choice. So allow yourself to be free from that. And again, the nature thing comes into play. Just sitting down and watching a leaf, watching one leaf and what it's doing in the breeze for three minutes, four minutes, put your timer on and see whether you don't perhaps feel better after that. There's another thing that I've spoken about before in slowing down and that is if somebody comes to the door to actually, I don't know if you get people ringing your doorbell, coming to your door unexpectedly, but even if they're not unexpected, try to see them as if for the first time. If you're washing dishes, try to be mindful in that. Feel the warm water, smell the soap. If you're loading the dishwasher, notice yourself putting things into the dishwasher. So I hope all of this chat has helped you. And I'm now going to talk a little bit about what I'm doing online uh, on this video at the moment. And that is I'm painting with my gel pens. I did a whole little series on painting with gel pens and I can link that above um, in case you're new to the channel and you haven't seen that yet, um, things you can do with gel pens. And this is using glycerin a little bit of water and painting with the gel pen. So I scribbled with it on magic tape. And so it's giving, it's this gel pen that I'm trying to finish again. And this is a large area. So I was very afraid that I wouldn't have enough for all of it. So I decided to paint with it because it makes it go further. And it's also allowing that color that I use to be used in a pastel um, and less what is the word I want? I simply can't think of the word I, for, for less, less full of color. <laughs> I've gone blank, sorry. Um, so I'm using the, that color like that and it, it actually is working as a color. I'm really enjoying trying to finish this little mandala book. It's sometimes mandalas are just the thing I need in my life. And I do like the large spaces that allow me to paint in them as well. And don't strain my eyes. <laughs> don't make me make too many color choices. All of those help me be mindful and just enjoy myself. I finally remembered what the word was that I wanted and that is the value. So it's a lighter value of that deep pink color than before. And so we're coming to the end of our video. I ended up using more red at the end and then I've gone around the edges of that pink with the gel pen. Still trying to finish that color but I ended up still with a little bit so I'll put some as an accent color in the next mandala as well. And it will eventually get finished. I am quite amazed. I really, I know I've said this before, at how long, how much ink is in this pen. 
Usually my gel pens dry up and I can't manage to use them, but I seem to be managing to get every last drop out of this one. So let me know what you think of this mandala, if you like how it turned out. And I'd also love to know if you also enjoy colouring mandalas. Thank you for watching and I wish you a wonderful, grateful next few artistic and colourful days. Bye-bye now.